started. I want to I want to start the way we do the way we have every every chapter, which is just a chance to remind ourselves to put other worries, other thoughts aside, and just kind of be present right here, right now, where we are. Okay. So let's do that the way we've been doing it. Let's take a big deep breath. One more. And now I want you to notice, not talking about it, but notice three things you see around you. And maybe there are three different things that you didn't notice last time. And I want you to listen for three things that you hear.
things are going to be about acts of service. And you're going to notice, as we've done in some of our other chapels, there's a reading from five of the major world religions, not all of them, but because the whole idea of serving others is something that is spoken about, has been spoken about for centuries and supported by all, all the major religions. So you're going to hear a little bit from each of the, of the religions that we pulled out today, uh, read by students, and we'll tie it all up at the end of the service. So let's start with Mary Brown. Firstly, Christianity. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Give to everyone who begs from you and from one who takes away your good. Do not demand them back. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's death. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noon day. If your brother becomes poor and cannot maintain himself with you, you shall support him as though he were a stranger and so sojourner, and he shall live with you. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed toward your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land.
other in acts of piety and righteousness, and do not assist each other in acts of sinfulness and perfection.
just read a couple more. I'm not going to read them all. Painful, running through my whole body, okay? So I'm going to guess, I don't know who that is, but and that's okay. Some of you did hard work. Mr. Williams, what did you, you took people out on the trails? Yeah, we went to Ottawa and we built bridges. Yep. That would cause some physical pain, especially if you're not someone who's used to doing that kind of work. I've spoken to a couple people that were standing outside, getting, collecting cans in the cold. Was it cold that day, Mr. Oreo? Yeah. And maybe they didn't feel like they collected as much as they thought they would have after an hour and a half standing in the cold. That would cause some pain if you're really, really cold. Helping others made me feel positive. So I'm going to stop there, although I know there's many more in here. Did, did you all hear something that you also felt when I was reading them? Probably. Probably. Uh, so I bring this up because, and I don't know this as a fact, but I'm going to guess that Martin Luther King Jr. felt all of those things. He had to do marches out in the cold. He had to deal with people that hated him. I hopefully none of you experienced that on your service day. Hopefully no one came over to you and said something that was hurtful. But he was human. And so the thing about Martin Luther King Jr. is that he was also a man of faith. Like I said, he was someone who had found some strength in his belief that there was a bigger plan at work. He believed in his God and he believed in the Christian faith, but that could go for any, any faith. And one thing I looked up is that I looked up, did Martin Luther King have any prayers that were published? Do we have any record of his praying life, right? Because we've heard his speeches, uh, but we haven't always heard what was in his deep, deepest heart and his soul, maybe when he was speaking to his people in his congregation. So I found a whole bunch of prayers. I'm not going to read them all to you because there were pages and pages, but I'm picking out bits of them that have to do with the very things we're talking about. So... Talking about being physically tired, he did a prayer, again, just little highlights. A prayer that said, dear God, give us strength of body to keep walking for freedom. Give us strength to remain nonviolent even though we may face death. Um, he even prayed for his enemies. Can you imagine that? Isn't that hard to imagine? Someone who's causing so much violence toward you and your, your people? Pray for them. Here's a prayer, a bit of that. He says, God, we thank you for the inspiration of Jesus. Grant that we will love you with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, even our enemy neighbors. He's, he's telling his followers to love hit their enemies. Have you ever heard of a tragedy that might be happening and you hear people say, oh, my thoughts and prayers are with you? Have you ever heard that? Yeah, sometimes if there's a natural disaster, people will say, oh, we're praying for them. Our thoughts and prayers are with them. And that's good, but we know action also is a part of it, too. He even spoke to that in his prayers. He wrote, uh, We thank you for your church, founded upon your word, that challenges us to do more than just sing and pray, but to go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us and not upon you. So again, even a man who was a preacher thought there was, there was more to it than just thinking and praying. Uh, this is an interesting one. He admits when, the, when he himself is not perfect, and he admits that people are not perfect, even the people we think of as the wisest people. This is a prayer where he says, we come before thee painfully aware of our inadequacies and shortcomings. We realize that we stand surrounded with the mountains of love, and we deliberately dwell in the valley of hate. We stand amid the forces of truth and deliberately lie. We are forever offered the high road, and yet we choose to travel the low road. So, again, here's Martin Luther King admitting that we don't always do the right thing. How many of you could imagine if Martin Luther King was ever scared? What do you think? Yeah. So this one was very powerful to me when I read this. He wrote, Lord, I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right, but now I'm afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I have nothing left. He apparently said this prayer right after receiving a telephone call from a white racist who threatened his life, his home, and his family. And that was what his prayer was, to ask for strength when he was scared. And then I want to finish this with this, finish these prayers with this last one. So we often think, oh, he was Christian, so he was only speaking about Christians. But no, he was speaking about everybody. Wasn't that what Martin Luther, Martin Luther King believed in? That all of us should be loved and supported and accepted? So here's a prayer where he prays, no matter what your faith is, and he says, we call, you different, we call you different names. Some of you call, some of us call you Allah, some call you Elohim, some call you Jehovah, some call you Brahma, some call you the unmoved mover. But we know that these are all names for the one and the same God. So again, 
I think these are just important things to think about, and it may, may or may not make sense to you right now because we're in a room of people that have all different beliefs. But I think the one common theme here is that doing good for other people is something that most would agree is important, whether you're a religious person or not, but certainly supported by some of the wisest thinkers and believers out there. So I hope that you kind of dig deep and think about that a little bit. So I want to end with a story. Uh, well, before I do, I, I want to say one more thing, too. Uh, some of us did things like frosting a cupcake. And I talked to a few people that were like, it was fun, but like, I didn't really feel like I was doing anything for anybody. Because you didn't see that person eat the cupcake, did you? No. Do you guys know what's going to happen with the cupcakes? Did they tell you? They probably told you. They're going to freeze them, I think. And then be, they're going to be delivered at, around Valentine's Day to people who probably aren't going to get many visitors where they live. Maybe their family lives too far away to visit them. Maybe they don't have any family left. So what you did two months prior is going to be met with a big smile on the other end. Those of you that were out there working hard with Mr. Williams, you're probably never going to see that some family is getting a break from their busy day and walking in the woods and able to enjoy that little spot where they can walk over that bridge. I took students playing music at a nursing home, and boy, did they love it. I keep getting emails even from people about it. So you may not know what your little tiny job was. You may not know how that impacted someone, but it, it, I can promise you it did. But the biggest challenge is not whether you're going to do community service, but finding ways to do something every day, not just on Martin Luther King Day. So remember, we talked about gratitude. We don't want to just be great, grateful in November. That would be a shame. <laughs> Martin Luther King Day is only one day a year. But what can you do every single day? I'm going to give you an example. He's not here right now. I was having uh, lunch with HQ yesterday. He just offered to take my place. This is that. Let me clear your place. He just, and I needed that, truthfully, because it was the first moment I, I sat down. He did a little mini act of service for me. Without not trying to get credit for anything, he just did it. So let's not wait to do acts of service for our secondary school applications or because your teacher's watching you, but think of the ways that can bring you joy by matching what you're good at with what people need. So you may not be a musician that would go to a nursing home and play music, but maybe people tell you that you're a good listener. Or maybe you have a really nice smile that brightens people's day. That is a little mini act of service. So when you match what you're good at with where there's a need somewhere, it's really a beautiful moment. So I, I hope we can all think of that. Now I'm gonna tell you a short little story of this is how we'll end it. You may have heard this story before. I'm not going to even read it. I think I'll remember how it goes. So this is just a pretend story, but it's, it's, a, it's a great one. So there's a story of a man who dies, and he gets transported to hell. This evil place, right? Think about it. And he goes there, though, and he sees tables and tables of beautiful food, big feasts around him. And he's like, wow, this is pretty cool. But then he looks at the faces of all the people there, and they are emaciated. They're thin. They're, they look hungry. They look like they're going to die. And he's like, how come all this delicious food, yet these people look hungry? Then he looks closer, and they all have these huge, long ladles. You know what a ladle is? Where you scoop out soup. So big that they can't figure out how to get the food into their mouth. It just, it, it's just not working. So they're tempted by this great food, but they can't even eat. A few days go by, and he is magically transported to heaven. He gets there. He sees all that great food again. He sees the same ladles, and he's like, oh, no, not this again. But he looks up at the faces of the people there, and they are happy and nice and firm, and they're you know, full of cheeks, which means they've been eating. And he looks, takes a closer look. They have the same ladles, but they're feeding each other. They can make it work if they reached over and fed a different person with their ladle. Same set of circumstances, different mindset, right? So I encourage you to picture that image and remember to serve others. And I'm going to end it with this quote because I thought it was perfect for that story by a Nobel uh, Peace Prize winner, a uh, songwriter and poet. I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I acted and behold, service was joy. And on that note, we're going to end with a song. So I'd like to invite Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Oaks, Mrs. Oaks. I'm assuming you, you're not up for this, right? Wherever you are. Yep, that's okay. Mr. Oaks, Mr. McCarthy, and Ms. Profe. Yeah, Profe always gets the cheers. What's up with that? Someone says yes. <laughs>
inspired to write the song uh, by the words of Martin Luther King Jr.
flow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Thank you all for participating out there and up here.